comments about how this is Israel's 9-11 and we should not stop them is making me go insane. Why is it making me go insane? Because what we did after 9-11 was horrifying and terrible. And yet it seems as though not a single person has learned their lesson from that. Let's start off with what Brandon said, because he had some takes. Uh, he delivered a remark on the Israel-Hamas conflict. I mean this literally. When the pure, unadulterated evil is unleashed on this world. The people of Israel lived through one such moment this weekend. The bloody hands of the terrorist organization Hamas a group whose stated purpose for being is to kill Jews. This is an act of sheer evil. Yeah, dude, they're, they're doing, like, oh, my God. Oh, ay, ay, ay. Okay, first of all, like, Hamas isn't operating like uh, the fucking Oath Keepers or some shit, okay? Or, or the American neo-Nazi movement. Palestinians in general. Palestinians in general are not operating because they just, oh, they just hate Jews. That's why they're doing it. Do, are there people in Palestine that do hate Jews? Absolutely, okay? But if you identify and then reduce the problem to like, oh, they just hate Jews and that's why they're doing it and not like the fucking occupation, then you've lost the plot. Bro wants the viewer to believe him but doesn't believe the president. What? Are you new here? You, <laughs> what? Why the fuck would I believe why the fuck would I believe Joe Brandon? More than 1,000 civilians slaughtered, not just killed, slaughtered in Israel. Among them, at least 14 American citizens killed. Parents butchered using their bodies to try to protect their children. Stomach-turning reports of being babies being killed. Entire families slain. Young people massacred while attending a musical festival to celebrate peace. To celebrate peace. Women raped, assaulted, paraded. Ass Yo, my boy is doing like, he's, dude, you're the president, dog. You're doing, like, this is stuff that you see on Reddit, dude. That's crazy. Trophies. Families hid their fear for hours and hours, desperately trying to keep their children quiet to avoid drawing attention and thousands of wounded alive, but carrying with them the bullet holes and the shrapnel wounds and the memory of what they endured. You all know these traumas never go away. There's still so many families desperately waiting to hear the fate of their loved ones, not knowing if they're alive or dead or hostages. Infants in their mother's arms, grandparents in wheelchairs, Holocaust survivors abducted and held hostage. Hostages whom Hamas has now threatened to execute in violation of every code of human morality. Wait, what the fuck? Okay, agree or disagree. I mean, there's a lot of the stuff that he mentioned is real, okay? Most of the stuff that he mentioned is real. That, they, they, that did happen. So I'm not going to hyper-focus on the um, stuff that is unsubstantiated. However, that is, unless you're trying to karma farm on Reddit, like, there's a specific reason for that, okay? Agree, disagree, doesn't matter. The specific reason was, and this was very deliberately mentioned from the jump, that uh, the according to the Palestinian authorities, that because they understand that Israel does not see them as human beings or, or treat them as human beings, and they will bomb them relentlessly, uh, the goal was to, one, engage in a prisoner swap, and two, to ensure that Gaza was not reduced to rubble because there were Israeli citizens inside of Gaza now. And once the bombing did not stop, they said they were going to start executing the prisoners unless the bombing, unless the bombing stopped. They didn't just say, "Oh yeah, we took hostages, so we're just gonna we're just gonna kill them." It all it also still corresponds to these people are engaging in this uh, behavior specifically because they're like violent and crazy and and don't have like any other uh, they don't have any uh, other real like tangible goals at all. It's just they're barbaric. They're bad. And they're barbaric and bad, and they're doing this specifically because of their uh, barbarism and, and bad behavior. Are their actions actually uh, gruesome? Absolutely. fucking lutely Okay? 
They are. But you're not analyzing, you are not analyzing the situation at all. And what's what's more important here is that what's more important here is that I feel like the Western media's perspective on the matter is literally different than even some of the Israeli media I have seen. Like these are human beings. The Gazans are human beings, but also you have Israeli citizens and citizens of other nationalities as well that have been taken hostage and you're and and Israel is basically uh written it off as like they're dead already. We don't care. That's crazy. 2 days ago, oh, let me see if I can find um let me see really quickly if I can find the the the report that I wanted to bring up. 2 days ago on the night of the 1st uh on the night of the 1st um uh, on October 7, basically, Smotrich in a cabinet meeting said, it's time to be cruel, even if it means killing the Israeli hostages in Gaza. And now it has become the official Israeli policy. Three days later, they actually are going along with it. What does this imply? This implies that Netanyahu's coalition is not listening to any sane person in the room, and they are simply going along with the most reactionary elements within their government, okay? That is fucking crazy. That's terrifying. People in Gaza thought maybe uh, they won't snipe children if they walk to the fucking border wall. They were wrong about that. Then the Palestinian coalition or uh, Hamas thought maybe they won't bomb their own citizens, and they were, boy, were they wrong on that too. Like, People basically thought, I mean, I, I assume they falsely uh, believed that the, the Israeli government would take uh, extra care and consideration to ensure the protection of their own citizens, which is why I thought that they would at least try to do a ground war and, and more tactical excursions rather than uh, just indiscriminate bombing, okay? And it turns out, no, they're going with the final solution. That's crazy. And it's not like they're hiding it. Like, they're openly stating the Israeli army is launching a full-scale offensive on the Gaza Strip. We have abolished all the rules of war. Our soldiers will not be held accountable for anything. There will be no military courts. You know what I mean? They, they are, they're, they're very actively saying that, no, they're going in there to kill every single person. So the unconditional support that you hear, rather than a more tempered approach and, and calls for de-escalation, okay, it's gone. No one, no one is, is trying to be a sane person here. No one is trying to scale it back. Every single person that is involved in this on the Western front is basically saying, go, go buck wild, fuck it, kill them all, genocide. We are watching genocidal actions unfold in front of our eyes, okay? Hamas, of course, is not blameless in the matter, but it is ridiculous. It is ridiculous to think, like, if you have this opinion and you think civilians dying is horrifying and bad, you cannot, if you can't extend that to the children of Gaza dying because their homes are being reduced to fucking rubble, if you cannot extend it to the other side, it's very obvious how you operate. You do not think that these are people. Now, maybe you got to that point because you're angry, or maybe you got to that point as a, as a combination of being angry and also on top of that, you, uh, uh, you, you were misinformed your whole life or maybe deliberately you, you just didn't see anything. You thought that this was in a fucking vacuum or some shit like that. But this is, this is genuinely psychotic behavior. I, it's almost as if they were attacked first. Yeah, it would be like that, except that's not the case. Okay, this goes back to 1948. Like, what the fuck do you mean? It's almost like they were attacked first. That is so insane. Yeah, the people of Gaza were just like uh, going, oh, we hate these guys. We hate these guys for no fucking reason. Like, what are you talking about? Attacked first. Yeah, when Iran, Egypt, and Palestine invaded Israel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So why did you skip past 1948 for some reason? Why Why did you skip past Nakba, the, the, the actual inception of the uh, Israeli state. Is there a specific reason for that? 
1948, they got conquered, right? I mean, like, what if the Native Americans gather up tomorrow and launch a bow and attack arrow on the Capitol like January 6th? Would that be okay? That's a, that's a beautiful comparison that you're making, except the Native American genocide was a successful one. That's the difference. And you weren't there to watch it unfold. Do you understand? You're making a defense. And even then, Native Americans, the ones that remain on U.S. soil, at least have citizenship. Even though their reservations are still underserved, they still are, uh, are, are, are uh, deliberately and systematically uh, left behind by the American government. But you understand that, like, genocide did happen, okay? Genocide did happen, but you weren't there to watch it unfold. We are now living in uh, the, the, the nation that was built on top of that, but it does seem like your perspective on the matter would have been, yeah, no, it's good that it happened, actually, and we should do that. We should do Trail of Tears again, okay? That's the difference here. If Hamas didn't attack Israel, then Gaza would not be getting bombed. Crazy take. Yes, that is a crazy take. Awful spin zone here, to be fair. If Hamas didn't attack Gaza, would not be getting bombed is a crazy take. Because, as I've said time and time again, people love to mention Gaza, love to claim that like uh, Gaza is responsible for the, uh, the bloodshed that children experience. Gaza is... Re the, the children in Gaza experience uh not having access to fucking clean water not having uh you know access to electricity because israel controls all of that living inside of an open-air prison and that's like justifiable you believe all of that but you don't even fucking recognize the other side of the equation there are plenty of palestinians living on uh currently occupied west bank okay those guys didn't do anything neither did the kids in gaza okay but those guys didn't do anything, and their situation is dire as well. So peaceful coexistence has not worked out for them either. And this is not my assessment. This is the assessment of Shin Bet. Even Israel's own internal intelligence agencies recognize that the consistent death and destruction that befalls the Palestinian people is creating uh, a, a security threat, okay? It is very difficult not to meet this reality but but somehow plenty of people on the west refuse to see that mm. you say shin bet went woke but uh that that is literally what the netanyahu administration said when they were warned i'm israeli and i wasn't alive to see the 1948 ethnic cleansing happen as well though why do people want me to die for it that's a beautiful question my friend because i never said you should die for it at all I simply stated that Palestinians shouldn't die and you shouldn't die either. So I don't know why you're making it seem like that is my perspective. Okay? I never said that. I don't believe you should die. Why the fuck would I... Why? Why would I say that? Everyone in here, everyone that comes in here loves to shadow box with like some made up or basically some, um, some real... Uh, uh, supposedly left this on the internet that's always like every Israeli deserves death right now. You know what I mean? Chatters are saying who, but many people are saying all the 1948 borders are occupied and colonizers deserve death, but you didn't say that, I agree. These are infinitely more complex matters than, uh, than one that you can reduce to a black and white situation. Okay? Does this prove Kyan's argument that media is controlled by the Jews, free Palestine? Man, shut the fuck up. It's such a... It, it, it is... I have the least amount of patience for motherfuckers who look at a situation where so much death and destruction is happening and they go, how can I make this about like being a Nazi in America and being anti-Semitic? Yeah, man, you really got it. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, totally. Israel controls American media. What are, you, what are you fucking saying? Like, this is childish, dude. This is childish. America's interests and Israel's interests align perfectly, okay? Israel as a state is... British design, the media is controlled by capital owners, okay? Not by Jews. There is no uh, monolithic uh, Jewish understanding of Israel. Even Jews inside of Israel do not agree with all of the actions of the Israeli government, let alone Jews in America. Shut the fuck up. This is so stupid.
I see not taking sides and acknowledging Israel's past occupation of violence, but what to do now that Hamas is being chosen of Palestinians to resist? I surely don't want them in power of anything. If Hamas would go away by giving Palestinians land and freedom, that would be ideal, but not the case. It seems like we're stuck with Hamas now. It's important to analyze how we got here, specifically because the only way to starve out Hamas and its influence is by showing that there is a different way possible, that there is actually... Uh, there is actually a, a nation-state project that would not be brutal occupation. And Israel has chosen not to do that, even though there were plenty of people that said, hey, stop doing that in the West Bank. You are still partitioning the West Bank. You're still killing people in the West Bank. You are ethnically displacing them in the West Bank. And you're showing every Palestinian and everyone in the Arab world and everyone in the Muslim world and everyone around the world that even pays a little bit of fucking attention to the apartheid in Israel that what is going on is, is uh, you just want them out. You just want to cleanse the lands. This is why in, in closed door meetings in 2019, Netanyahu very openly said that we only deal with Hamas because Hamas is the perfect villain to maintain a uh the maintain the reality that there will never be a palestinian state we want to thwart every effort of building a palestinian state and the best possible way to do that is by specifically dealing with hamas that's why the people of palestine palestinian people do not like the palestinian authority because the palestinian authority is what happens when you collaborate with israel now does israel not recognize that there is an opportunity there if they wanted to legitimately allow Palestinians to coexist? Of course, but they don't want that. They want to say, look how barbaric and look how ruthless and look how violent these Palestinians are. It's a two-pronged approach. On the one hand, you keep bombing them, you keep hurting them, you keep killing them, you keep humiliating them. And on the other hand, the, on the second prong approach, you show that, yes, if you collaborate with us, we will keep doing that to you. Because Gaza is what happens when you don't collaborate with Israel, okay? When you fight back against Israel through violent means. And the West Bank happens when you try to collaborate with Israel. And both of those circumstances are dire for the Palestinian population that is being ethnically displaced. So if that's the case, then of course Palestinians are going to look at that and go, slowly but surely, uh, even if we do not agree even if we do not agree with Hamas in general, they are seen as the only people that are able to fight back. Wait, what? The German woman with dreads is on the truck is alive and in the hospital? Wait, what? They, how do you know that? Where is that coming from? Shani Lok. Wait, what? In a glimmer of hope for the family of missing German Shani Nicole Luke, the 22-year-old is said to be seriously injured in a Hamas hospital. The mother, Ricardo Luke, addresses Build with a video message. In it, she begs the federal government for help. You have to act quickly and get Shani out of the Gaza Strip. How does she know? The video has been going around the world since the weekend. I don't want to show this uh, part. Um, a motionless victim with dreadlocks and conspicuous tattoos lies seriously injured on a truck behind Hamas terrorists and is presented to a cheering crowd, uh, cheering crowd. Build is not serious news. Yeah, Newsweek is not serious either. But uh, apparently, Shani Luke's twenty-two, uh, Shani Luke's mother believes that uh, she is alive. Feared she was dead after seeing the video of showing Luke unconscious in a car after being kidnapped by Hamas fighters. In an appeal she shared on social media, she said uh, she was sent a video uh, in which I could clearly see our daughter unconscious in the car with the Palestinians driving them around in the Gaza Strip. While the video doesn't show the woman's face, Luke said the family said they were able to identify her by dreadlocks and tattoos. On Tuesday, Luke's family announced that they had proof that Luke, who grew up in Israel, was alive. Swiss German language news website Blick reported that her mother said she was in a hospital in Gaza with serious head injuries. We now have more information that Shani is alive, her mother told television uh, channel NTV, adding that she received information from unnamed Palestinian sources. The mother added Luke is seriously injured and asked the German government for help and quick action. I mean, this could be true. It could be a scam. It could be, uh, it could be a, a, a, uh, I don't know. It, it's again, this has been picked up by Der Spiegel, reputable liberal outlet and Tagesschau state funded media. They say, according to the mother, she's alive. Yeah. But the problem is, uh, the mother, the mother saying she is most likely alive is not enough, uh, to, it is not enough. I mean, it could be true. 
I believe the mother, like thinking that she's alive. I, I that part of the story is true, but was she duped? I do not know. Okay. At least 150 people are estimated to have been kidnapped by Hamas fighters during their surprise attack by land, sea, and air on Israel on Saturday. If you ask, if you ask the the um, official numbers from Israeli authorities, they said around 10 people were kidnapped. Israeli media, on the other hand, which has been pretty solid on its reporting so far, okay, uh, uh, whether it be the, the uh, confirmations that the Egyptian intelligence did tell them about the imminent attack or whether it be uh, making, a, uh, making a tally of all the people that died and everything else that's going on. Um, I think that uh, overall, uh, the, the, uh, I the Israeli media's tally uh, shows that more than 100 uh, people have been kidnapped. And Palestinians are saying that it's even larger than that. She's not just German. She's a dual citizen Israeli. Yes. <sighs> what Freda says also resonates. At least think of the families of the victims who are suffering. You're fantasizing about it. Imagine if you saw 8,000 like posts about how their daughter or son was abused based on completely unverified claims. I mean, ultimately... Um, I don't think people just... I don't think people care. I'm not scrolling. Don't worry. That's literally false. IDF spokesman said that they're in touch with tens of families uh, about their abducted relatives. The original report of the IDF was only uh, 10 or 12 people were abducted. That number quickly changed, obviously. Uh, and Israeli media is at, at the very least doing a, a decent job of, of making an accurate count. You know? I hate the fact that they keep mentioning the targeting citizens. I mean, but it's true. Citizens, citizens were also killed in this situation. Okay, they were. Ein Rand. <laughs> I love a Turkish guy whose username is Ein Rand. That's awesome. Anyway, um, why do you think Israel is showing restraint compared to the reaction to Gaza to the escalation happening around its border with Lebanon? Does Iran's backing of Hezbollah carry that much weight? Yes. Early. Where is this from? This is one of the mothers that was. Uh, this is one of the mothers that was captured. She was not captured. What? What is this? What is this? Where is this from? Oh, they. Uh, she was held in her home. Okay. Channel 12 News in Israel. Yeah. Do you believe this is propaganda or not? Brother, uh, Israeli media has zero need or interest in humanizing uh, Palestinian uh, resistance fighters. They have zero interest in humanizing, uh, uh, especially Hamas. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? They're, if if they are covering this, this is what happened. Like, what do you mean? This is why I'm saying it's, it's a very weird situation. It's a wor very weird situation we've gotten to where, like, I'm relying on both Zionist and anti-Zionist 
uh, Israeli uh, organizations and Israeli media to get a better assessment of what's going on than looking at Western media, which is literally doing blood and soil propaganda. That's the problem. It's shocking to see how, how the situation has unfolded where like literally like actual Zionist uh, media outlets in Israel are reporting on what's going on in a much more accurate uh, fashion than Western media that is like literally jumping at anything that they can when the situation already is violent. It's already brutal. Western media is barely covering it. It's all editorial by the fucking Haas. Yeah, oh my God, bro. Holy shit, dude. The Turks are fucking insane. Literally, we've banned so many Turkish people today. Every single person, every single Turk that's come into the chat is behaving like uh, the, the right-wing Indian nationalists. It's so insane. They got super mad that I said that the Western world does not see you as anything different than the Arabs that you supposedly think you're better than. And oh my God, bro, they are, that, that touched, that tugged on a heartstring there, okay? Every single person has been like, I'm going to kill, I'm going to fuck your mother to death. Like, every single Arab that dies is beautiful. They're, they're so mad. They're so fucking mad. Orientalist people are going to see you. Anyway, um, you know you can't strike that nerve. What's next? You're going to tell Dominicans that the West thinks they're black? I mean, I'm not touching any of that with a 10-foot pole, okay? I thought they supported Palestinians. Of course, there are plenty of Turks that support Palestinians. What are you talking about? For a multitude of different reasons, ranging from uh, an interest, a genuine interest in emancipation for Palestinian people, all the way to, uh, you know, uh, defending uh, the Muslim interests, it, it, there is a, a thousand different reasons for it. And then there are people on the other side, even on the liberal side especially, that are uh, very anti-Arab or for different reasons. They believe that like uh, some nationalists think that it's good that Israel helped Azerbaijan. Uh, so there's, there's, it's, it's too complex for Americans to comprehend immediately. And a lot of Turks didn't understand what I was saying. And now they're just mad from like every different avenue. The people that are defending me would normally shit on me if they knew what my perspective was on Recep Tayyip Erdogan, for example, or, or like Islamist fundamentalism in general. Some of those people are defending me right now because they only hear that I'm defending uh, Palestinians. So they just think automatically that I am on their side all the time, unconditionally. Some of the people are attacking me because they do not understand what I'm saying. There's no nuance to it. Okay. And uh, most people are just saying, you don't know anything about Turkey. Don't ever talk about it. You know, the very same people, uh, the very same people that were probably uh, the reason why they've been following uh, for a while is because they were like, oh, wow, I'm proud that there's a Turkish guy who's so successful in America. Or uh, I'm proud of the efforts of this community in raising, you know, uh, almost two million dollars for uh, the earthquake relief funds after Turkey are now coming in here to be like, we love watching we love watching the, the Arabs die on television. We love watching blood and soil. Some of them are, not every single one. So it's just very, I followed and unfollowed you so many times. Yeah. But the worst thing I could have ever said that would have pissed off every single Turkish person is I said, the West sees you as the same as Arabs, no matter how much you think uh, you are a, a Westerner. I said, even though you are right, you are missing the nuance about what immigration did to Turkey in the last six to eight years. No, I am very aware of what it did. <laughs> I know. I think a lot of people forget that, like, my entire family still lives in Turkey. I know. I see it. Bana Amerikan uşağı demeniz çok komik. Günün sonunda. Evet. İsrail'i savunmadığım için Amerikan uşağıyım. Peki. Bir düşün. Biraz düşün. Biraz düşün. Anyway, <sighs> anyway, okay, so Turkish liberal leftists are extremely racist and hostile to anyone perceived uh, browner than them. I've lived in Turkey for the last nine years and learned the language at the C2 level, but alhamdulillah, I'm leaving to Europe soon because some of y'all are unbelievable. How do you not get exhausted? I do, but you know, we keep going. There's a lot to cover. All right, let's get back to Brandon. It's abhorrent 
The brutality of Hamas, these bloodthirstiness have to brings pee. to mind the worst, the worst rampages of ISIS. This is terrorism. But sadly, for the Jewish people, it's not new. This attack has brought to the surface painful memories and the scars left by a millennia of anti-Semitism and genocide of the Jewish people. So in this moment, we must be crystal clear. We stand with Israel. We stand with Israel. And we will make sure Israel has what it needs to take care of its citizens, defend itself, and respond to this attack. There's no justification for terrorism. There's no excuse. Hamas does not stand for the Palestinian people's right to dignity and self-determination. Its stated purpose is the annihilation of the state of Israel on the murder of Jewish people. They use Palestinian civilians as human shields. Hamas offers nothing but terror and bloodshed with no regard to who pays the price. The loss of innocent life is heartbreaking. Like every nation in the world, Israel has the right to respond, indeed has a duty to respond to these vicious attacks. I just got off the phone with a third call with Prime Minister Netanyahu. And I told him, the United States experience with Israel experiencing our response to be swift, decisive, and overwhelming. We also discussed how democracies like Israel and the United States are stronger uh. and more secure when we act according to the rule oh, of law. Terrorists pur purposely target civilians. Damn, bro, he couldn't get that. He couldn't get on that good Adderall for this dude. He couldn't even get out of bed at it for this one. Anyway, listen, have you seen the Israel newspaper Haaretz report on the three-fourths of the death being military? Obviously not defense, that one-fourth is still incredibly high, and excuse me, just lower the impression that got us from news media. Is there any credibility to that? Yes. Ultimately, it doesn't matter because a thousand Israelis died. There were actual fucking babies that died, okay? That's, that's still ruthless. It's still fucking brutal. You have to analyze that within the context of where that brutality comes from, this is not a justification for said brutality, and a lot of people misunderstand that and think, oh, this must be a justification for said brutality. No, it is not, okay? I am sick and tired, I guess, of, of regularly fucking uh, uh, uh, having to stop myself halfway to repeat the things over and over again. I will keep doing it so that people understand, okay? My point is... Even if, even if babies were not lined up and had their fucking heads decapitated, okay, piece by piece, it could have, one, there is a likelihood that it could have happened, and two, it doesn't matter because it did happen. Like, babies died, okay? How is it not a justification? Oh. Analysis is not the same as justification. You want it to be because it makes you feel differently okay you you want to feel differently about it you want to feel righteous in israel's retaliation and you don't want to recognize that that violence is directly the response or that violence that has been ongoing is is causing this violence that happened in israel okay this is not my analysis either this is not simply my analysis that I've come up with on my own, this is the same thing that Israeli internal security has been saying. This is the same thing that Haaretz has been saying, the Israeli paper of record, okay? It is a literal fact. The reason why we must be tempered in this situation and, and look, at this, look at it and analyze it is so that it does not continue. Because if violence begets violence and the apartheid occupation has been increasingly more violent towards the Palestinians, okay, and Palestinians feel as though they have no other method but to push back and to fight back, 
as a consequence of the violence that they experience on a daily fucking basis, okay, if you want that violence to end, as I do, you have to analyze the root cause. That's it. And no, the Anadolu agency saying uh, that uh, Hamas beheads babies is not correct doesn't change the reality that babies were still killed, okay? Like, that is a real thing. That is a real thing that happened. Children died. Children died. Babies died. This is not up for debate in that regard. It, that part is true. Just like children and babies die every fucking day in Gaza and have died by the hundreds since Israel retaliated in the way that it only knows how. Endless bombing campaigns inside of the open air prison that they operate. If you want an end to the violence, you must end it in its entirety. And the maintenance of an apartheid state requires consistent violence. That's it. These kinds of calls for uh, uh, unfettered, unshackled support for Israeli retaliation only makes matters worse. And I will give you a great example from the Trump administration. In 2018, after the Trump administration passed new laws that required uh, the the like re that required that Muslim uh, operatives have to pay their victims of terror, whatever the American State Department decided was like their responsibility, uh, money before they could ever receive aid. Okay, now of course. That never existed for Saudi Arabia. It was specifically used towards whoever uh, uh, they declare to be uh, doing terror and doing terrorist activities, specifically Iran, Iran-affiliated cells, maybe Lebanon, but also the Palestinian Authority. Okay? Do you know who said this would actually constitute a security threat in 2018? and told the Trump administration to not stop giving funds to the Palestinian Authority? Israel! Because even they, back then, recognized that this level of aid is a necessity. Do you understand? People that have different opinions than me on the maintenance of the Israeli state are still in agreement with the fundamental truth that... The more you take things away from the Palestinians, the more violent they will get, okay? That this would constitute a security threat. That's it. Nefret Soylimit reported? What? what? Dude, I don't know what the Turks are doing. I, like, what's happening? You, you guys are, uh, you think like, what? You're going to report me and get me banned or something? I'm getting brigaded by Turkish streamers? Like, what's going on? You guys good? You are getting one guide? Brother, you do not understand. You do not understand what is going on in the chat because you do not speak Turkish. Okay? Fans of mine who do speak Turkish are completely familiar with what is going on in the chat. They're saying I'm racist towards Turks. Anyway, let's continue. You need a Turk card to defend yourself? Yeah, let's continue kill them. We uphold the laws of war, the law of war. It matters. There's a difference. Today, Americans across the country are praying for all those families that have been ripped apart. A lot of us know how it feels. It leaves a black hole in your chest when you lose family. Feeling like you're being sucked in. The anger, the pain, the sense of hopelessness. This is what they mean by a human tragedy. You praise Palestine and insult Turks. I hope you get banned. It's easy to live in America and comment on this place. Evet arkadaşlar, doğru söylüyorsunuz. Ben Türkleri hiç sevmiyorum. Haklısın. Doğru. O yüzden 2 milyon dolar e, e, e, para gönderdik Türkiye'ye bu komüniteden. Doğru söylüyorsunuz abi. Evet. Bu kadar kolay mı? Sizin... E, Bu, bu kadar bu kadar kolay mı sizin e, manipüle edilmeniz gerçekten bu kadar mı kolay 
Bir değil 2 milyon dolar. Bu kadar mı kolay ama gerçekten? Değil mi? Amerika'da bana diyorlar ki sen Türkiye'yi savunuyorsun. Sen Müslümansın. Sen e, Amerika'yı hiçbir zaman anlayamazsın. Şimdi kendi vatanımın adamları da bana bunu söylüyorlar. Hadi bakalım. Ne dersen din amına. Ne, ne, ne diyorsanız din amına koyayım. Hiç kimde bile değil. Yarrağımı yersiniz. Salaklar. Irkçıymışım Türklere karşı. Peki. Abi dedikleri ne arama? En azından ufak bir özür ortalığı sakinleştir. Az siktir lan. Ufak bir özür. Ne için özür dileyeceğim amına koyayım? Amerika'nın köpeği gibi davrananlar. Amerika'nın köpekliği, köpekliğini yapanlara özür mü dileyeceğim? Az siktir. Götümü yesinler. Eğer anlamadıysan demeye çalıştığım şeyi istediğin kadar kız. Dolar olmuş 20 lira. Hala buraya gelip bana bağırıyorsunuz. Götünüzdeki yarrak kimin yarrağı bir anlayın. Irkçılık yaptın Arap sevicisi Hasan. Hayvan oğlu hayvan. Ben Türk'üm. Bana ben Türkiye'ye karşı ırkçılık yapıyorum diyorsun. Ondan sonra Arap sevicisi diyorsun. Ulan o ırkçılık değil mi Arap sevicisi demek? Ha? Ne diyorsun oğlum sen? Ya bir kendini bir anla. Kendini bir... Yani nereden geldiğini anlamaya çalış bir. Geri zekalı. This guy goes, you're being racist. You're an Arab lover. In the same breath. And I'm trying to, to comprehend how you can on the one hand be anti-Arab, like be racist towards Arabs and say you're an Arab lover. And then simultaneously say I am racist against Turks. Bu toplum kendisi, kendi polisini, savcısını, terörist ilan etti, FETÖ yaftası yiyenleri anlarsın umarım. The funniest part is, they say, I'm a supporter of Fethullah Gülen, who is a CIA asset. They are the ones who are in agreement, which is weird, with the king, uh, the most famous Fethullah Gülen supporter. Let's take a look. Here. To all the Turks coming in here, Yeah, because of my uh, defense of Palestinians saying that I'm racist, but also simultaneously saying that I'm a Fethullah Gülen operative, he is a Fethullah Gülen operative. Ah, bah, ah, ah. Enes Kanter'le aynı düşünceniz var bu durumda. Haberiniz olsun. Uh, you're originally from Turkey, and you have been a very outspoken Duy, critic duyun. of that government. And the Turkish president, uh, Erdogan, recently met with the leader of Hamas in Turkey. Um, so we'd like to get your thoughts about how the Turkish government protects and supports the Hamas terrorist organization. You know, organizations like Hamas get a huge support from the governments like Turkey, like Iran, and countries like, especially the Turkey and Iran, are safe haven for Hamas. And they raise huge amount of money and also they get Turkish passport and literally travel. Kardeş, FETÖ'cü bu adam. Bu adam harbi FETÖ'cü. Direkt olarak FETÖ'cü bu adam. Niye onunla aynı düşüncedesiniz? Travel safety all around the world. So enough is enough. I mean, the video you, you guys are watching, this literally, this this meeting happened in, in, I believe, June in 2023. You know? So people need to wake up. And Erdogan is not, you know, a problem in Turkey, but he's a fact in other countries uh, around him. Uh, you're originally from Turkey. Anyway, to the Turks in the chat, at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, you're going to have to subscribe, which you can for $5. Now, of course, luckily for you, it's not actually going to be $5. It's going to be cheaper. So fear not. But an ad break comes regardless. Buraya gelip ağlayan malların yaş ortalaması 15'i geçmez Hasan siktir et. Bunlar zamanı geçince öğrenecek her şeyi. Ülkenin koloni gibi kullanılan Avrupa Amerika'yı korumaya devam etsinler. Şimdi kötü bilen ileride anlayacak işin gerçeğini. Abicim ben bunu ben bunu hiçbir zaman anlayamam ama 15 yaşında bile olsan, 10 yaşında bile olsan, 30 yaşında bile olsan günün sonunda Amerika götüne yarrağı sokuyor her gün Türkiye'de yaşıyorsan. Ondan sonra bunlar dönüp bana diyor ki biz abi İsrail'i savunuyoruz ve Amerika'yı savunuyoruz. Ne kadar ya bu ne, ne yapıyorsunuz abi siz? Manyak mısınız? Kafayı mı yediniz abi siz? İnanılmaz bir durum yani. Ve de bana ondan sonra diyor Amerika'nın uşağısın diyorlar. Ulan Amerika Filistin'i mi savunuyor? Hayvan oğlu hayvanlar. Siz salak mısınız? Günün sonunda ben Türk'üm. Amerikalılar ama sizi hiçbir zaman Arap'tan ayrı görmez. Bu sizin kendi düşünceniz değil. Bu Amerikalı'nın düşüncesi. Bunu anlayamıyorsan 
Ve bana kızıyorsan bunu söylediğim için ne diyeyim bilemiyorum. Cahillik. Bu kadar basit. Cahillik. Yaptığınız tamamıyla cahillik. Türk değilsin. Ah siktir lan Türk değilmişim. Yarrağımın anteni. Geri zekalılar. Here's the three minute break now. Aşağılık kompleksi bu. Aynen. Yani bir kere günün sonunda bir, bir konsepti savunmak istiyor insanlar. Ama kendileri anlamamışlar neyi savunduklarını. Hem bana diyorsun ki sorun fikir ayrılığı belirtirken siz de Kürtleri aynısını yapıyorsunuz değil. PKK'yı justify etmen Türk değilsin bu yüzden. Hayır onu da yanlış anladınız. Yanlış anladınız. O eziklikten geliyor. Direkt olarak eziklikten geliyor. Ermeni soy kurumu var diyen Alagabat sen Türk müsün? Evet. Ama bu doğru. Ona, ona istediğin kadar kız yani günün sonunda. Why is the PKK getting brought up? What is happening? Every single person, uh, every single Turkish person is very upset. Because I said, in their minds, they feel as though this is comparable to what happens to Kurds inside of Turkish borders, as I've described before. They are mad at me for multiple different angles. I have activated every single type of, every single type of uh, uh, different Turkish person that is upset. On the one hand, they're mad because I recognize the Armenian genocide, which is ironic because in America, they always say unconditionally that I do not. Okay, no matter what I say. So they're mad at that. They're mad that while the situation is different for uh, Kurdish treatment under uh, uh, under the the uh, Turkish borders, okay, that I believe that they have an insecurity about the situation, and therefore uh, they believe that Israel's actions are defensible when a a much better analysis is a necessity, okay. Bak hala bak bak hala anlamıyor. Çünkü İngilizce konuştuğum zaman anlamıyorsun. Kürtler her, her istediklerini elde edebiliyorlar. Ne anlatıyorsun Hasan? From a non-personal political take, the world wants to avoid putting any blame on Iran due to oil prices right now and the recovery happening. There isn't a concern over an embargo like the one following the Yom Kippur uh, war as the Mideast was more individualized economically, but Iran and BRICS are the concern. Just something to add. I think there that that is actually a, a fairly reasonable assessment I also think that I also think that they do not want to draw Iran into battle. I think I'm, I think America is if, and Israel is fearful of drawing Iran into a potentially three-front war for Israel. They're already fighting Hezbollah in uh, on uh, the Lebanese side. And that must be the reason as to why, that has to be the reason as to why they are uh, uh, <laughs> actively saying Iran is not involved in this. Because as we all know, one, Iran, of course, is involved in, in sending weapons, sometimes training, and also sending supplies into, uh, uh, into Gaza. Of course. Having said that, however... The fact that both the IDF and the American State Department and Iran itself has said that uh, while we, well, Iran has said that while they support the actions of Hamas, they were not involved in this one, is truly unique. And I think the major reason for it, uh, the major reason for it is that uh, they. Oh my god, I can't even pay attention to fucking what's going on. The chat is unbearable right now. My brain is breaking. Uh, they do not want... Uh, I think the major reason is because they do not want Iran to join the battle. An atrocity. On an appalling scale. We're going to continue to stand united, supporting the people of Israel who are suffering unspeakable losses and opposing the hatred and violence of terrorism. 
My team has been in near contact. Yes. Uh, oh, there's a language filter. Yeah, let's do... Fuck, you're right. Yeah. Put on, flip on the language filter for Turkish. That would eliminate like 90% of the fucking hate raid. What the fuck? Uh, almost all of it. Constant communication. Half of those motherfuckers don't know how to speak English. So it's great. Fascist. Ben fascistim, öyle mi? Thank you. Communication with our Israeli partners. Partners all across the region and the world. From the moment this crisis began. We're surging additional military assistance, including ammunition and interceptors to replenish Iron Dome. We're going to make sure that Israel does not run out of these critical assets to defend its cities and its citizens. My administration has consulted closely with Congress throughout this crisis. And when Congress returns, we're going to ask them to take urgent action to fund the national security requirements of our critical partners. This is not about party or politics. This is about the security of our world, the security of the United States of America. We now know that American citizens are among those being held by Hamas. I've directed my team to share intelligence and deploy additional experts from across the United States government to consult with and advise Israeli counterparts on hostage recovery, recovery efforts. Because as president, I have no higher priority than the safety of Americans being held hostage around the world. The United States has also enhanced our military force posture in the region to strengthen our deterrence. The Department of Defense has moved the USS Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group to the Eastern Mediterranean and bolstered our fighter aircraft presence. And we stand ready to move in additional assets as needed. Let me say again to any country, any organization, anyone thinking of taking advantage of this situation, I have one word. Don't. Don't. Our hearts may be broken, but our resolve is clear. Yesterday, I also spoke with the leaders of France, Germany, Italy, and UK to discuss the latest developments with our European allies and coordinate our united response. This comes on top of days of steady engagement with partners across the region. We're also taking steps at home. In cities across the United States of America, police departments have stepped up, security around centers for, of Jewish life. And the Department of Homeland Security and the Federal Bureau of Investigation are working closely with state and local law enforcement and Jewish community partners to identify and disrupt any domestic threat that could emerge in connection with these horrific attacks. This is a moment for the United States to come together, to grieve with those who are mourning. Let's be real clear. There is no place for hate in America. Not against Jews, not against Muslims, not against anybody. We reject, we reject, what we reject is terrorism. We condemn the indiscriminate evil, just as we've always done. That's what America stands for. You know, just over 50 years ago, I was thinking about it this morning, talking to the Secretary of State, the Vice President in my office. And over 50 years ago, as a young senator, I visited Israel for the first time as a newly elected senator. And I had a long, long trip a meeting with Golda Meir in her office just before the Yom Kippur War. And I guess she could see the consternation on my face as she described Yeah, I mean, listen, listen, listen. Guys, the man that is speaking before you literally uh, is, is, I mean, the, the, the entire American military apparatus was on board with fucking invading Iraq even though Iraq had even less to do with 9-11. That is why seeing so many comments on the fucking timeline about how this is Israel's 9-11 and we should not stop them is making me go insane. Why is it making me go insane? Because 
What the fuck we did after 9-11 was horrifying and terrible. And yet, it seems as though not a single person has learned their lesson from that. It's crazy. Who's saying is there 9-11? What do you mean? American politicians are. Joe Walsh said it. Richie Torres said it. They said that this would be like if 9-11 killed 20,000 people uh, because, uh, you know, uh, because of Israel's population numbers in comparison to America's population numbers. Like, I don't understand how you can look to America's reaction to 9-11 both domestically and also internationally and go, no, that shit was dope, actually. And that's exactly what Israel should do. That is crazy. That is crazy. That is so much more bloodshed. Describe what was being faced. They were facing. We walked outside in that, uh, that sort of hallway outside our office to have some photos. She looked at me but all of a sudden and said, would you like to have a photograph? And so I got up and followed her out. We're standing there silent, looking at the press. She could tell, I guess, I was concerned. She leaned over and whispered to me. She said, don't worry, Senator Biden. We have a secret weapon here in Israel. My word is what she said. We have no place else to go. We have no place else to go. What? For 75 years, Israel has stood as the ultimate guarantor. Bro, this dude is, is done. This dude is so... Dude, his brain is mush, dog. I, I'm not even kidding. Like, I don't even know what the fuck he's saying anymore. I, I, I mean, holy shit. The security of Jewish people around the world so that the atrocities of the past could never happen again. And let there be no doubt, the United States has Israel's back. We will make sure the Jewish and democratic state of Israel can defend itself today, tomorrow, as we always have. It's as simple as that. These atrocities have been sickening. We're with Israel. Let's make no mistake. Thank you. Mr. President, what was your reaction? Okay.